It's the last of the semi-finals. Only the best six cooks remain. Are you ready in there, Red Team? This is hot. Ah. Oh, got it. Last time, Cherry, Tommy and Neil all went home. Oh. Good luck. Oh, my God, good luck. <laughs> OMG, I'm really chuffed that I'm in the final six. I've become obsessed. I, I'm inventing recipes in my head. And who would have thought I'd ever do that? Made it through to the final six feels fantastic. But the pressure's up now. I'm full of nerves, but you have to use nerves as fuel. Location challenges are fine. It's the studio that I find the hardest. And here we are again, back in the studio. Only four will make it through to the finals. Welcome back to the MasterChef Kitchen and congratulations. Only six of you have got this far. Underneath those cloths are the ingredients and a classic recipe. You've all got a different recipe and a different set of ingredients. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Each one of these dishes inspired from a different part of the world. Pectorino ravioli with a sage oh my gosh. blank. What do you have? I've got a curry. You have one and a half hours to cook your classic recipe. And at the end of this, one of you is going home. Let's cook. For me, a classic is a classic because it has precision. I want something to be flavoured just so, and I want to eat it and go, wow. This is now heating up a bit, John. They've really got to step up to the mark. Sid does really tasty food, and he seems to have a very, very broad repertoire. I mean, he's good, and he's instinctive. I'm really happy to be in the final six. It's going to get interesting now. I can almost see the final, but I've got to keep on my game. Sid, you don't follow recipes, mate, do you? I don't. This, this is actually a treat. You know, I've been cooking for so long and I, I sort of just make it up as I go along, but it's quite refreshing to follow a recipe. What have you got to cook? <sighs> Lamb koftas with flatbread, a tzatziki and a hummus. Do you eat Greek food? I do love a kebab. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing on there that bothers you? I've made hummus, I've made tzatziki, obviously my way, but not, not this way. Nothing on there that bothers me, apart from the bread. But if I follow the instructions, what can go wrong? Kofta is actually the Persian word to grind. So it's ground meat. He's got mince, he's got spice, and he's going to make us a risol type thing. He's going to cook that all the way through. The flatbread for Sid is going to be the challenge, making sure they're lovely and thin and they puff up when they're in the oven. Lovely, sharp tzatziki could be a wonderful thing. 15 minutes have gone. Quarter of an hour gone. All right, guys? Alexis does tasty, good, hearty food. What I like about Alexis is he's got this great heritage, classic Greek food. I'm a huge believer in you learn by failure, but you don't have a chance to fail in this competition. What's your recipe, Alexis? It's a Portuguese fish stew. How do you feel about that? Really happy with it, actually. It's not a million miles away from the Greek fish stews, so I'm happy with filleting fish. The only thing that's going to give me a little bit of a problem, because I just don't cook with them, are the mussels. How do you feel about following a recipe? Uh, I like it. It gives me some structure. I never really stick to it, 
but it gives me a sort of a guideline, and I think that's kind of my weakness as a chef. And how about the competition? Do the family understand what you're going through? Yeah, I think they do now, but they're sick of eating the same thing over and over again. <laughs> He's got to get mussels cooked and these different bits of fish just cooked so. The big thing about Alexis's dish is the fish stock itself. Tomatoes, a bit of spice from chilli, potatoes to make the broth just thick enough that it's got a little bit of body around it. Richard's food is beginning to look stylish. I think Richard might have hit form just at the right time. I feel like my nine cat lives, I'm down to about one now, I think, but it's great to be in the final six, and I feel very, very pleased with myself, which is obviously a prelude to disaster. Forgive me, Richard, you look a little concerned. Yeah, I'm doing three things, and I don't know how to do any of them. What's your recipe? My recipe is a baked Alaska, which for me would be the dish of nightmare. Why? Because it involves sponge, meringue and ice cream, all three of which I feel are my enemy. Meringue, tricky. Ice cream, really tricky. Sponge, I burnt spectacularly in Howarth. So I've got a challenge ahead of me here. Can you resurrect a sponge? Well, if anyone should know about resurrection, it should be me. A baked Alaska is a cold ice cream jam cake, all covered with a lovely sticky meringue. It's one of those things that even pastry chefs struggle to get right. 35 minutes are gone, which means you've got 55 left. 55 minutes left. All this food is robust. It's big, it's colourful, and it's got bags of flavour. Can he follow a recipe? We're about to find out. I know I can cook. Maybe my presentation is a little weak, but my food has always tasted good. And so I think if I can just push through into that final, I'll be a happy man. Audley, what's your recipe? It's a classic butternut squash and pecorino ravioli with a sage burra blanc. Burr blanc. A burr blanc. So yeah, it's a burr blanc. It's not easy to read because it's French. It's not easy to read, it's not easy to cook. Have you made pasta before? No. But I'm good at following directions. Ah, are you? I think. Well, this is going to be the test. Audley, you look comfortable, and I'm happy about that, because I don't think this is, this is easy. You know the swan? Yeah. You see the swan gliding lovely across the water, but underneath, they're kicking like crazy. So I look like this, but inside... Ah! <laughs> but I can't show you that. I've got that poker face. Audley's got ravioli, little parcels of pasta, and in the side of that really well-seasoned roasted butternut squash. He's a big man with big hands. Getting those ravioli so they're precise around the outside, all sealed, is going to be a bit of a challenge. You have just 30 minutes left. Just 30 minutes. I like Louise. I think she's delivered some brilliant flavours along the way. I think she's going to like having a recipe to follow. This may be her round. Oh, my goodness, the pressure of being the last woman in the competition. And I tell you what, it's intimidating. You know, you've got Audley Harrison, for goodness sake. You've got Sid sledging me on the one hand. You've got Jimmy, who's lovely. The other two who are great cooks. There's an awful lot of pressure in there. Louise, how do you feel about following recipes? I love a recipe. You know that that has been the one thing I've been really looking forward to. The invention test, I just find them really stressful, actually. What is your recipe? It's a Cory Gussie, and I'm not sure if I pr pronounced that right. It's a chicken curry. Fine. So excited about curry. I love curry. Every Friday night is curry night in our house. They're just a sort of celebration for me. I love them. So we should expect yours to be super, then? The hardest thing about it is juggling the millions of things I've, that I've got to do and timing because there's now 25 minutes left and I've got to cook this for 25 minutes. You've been stressed at times. Have you, have you had enough now? No, because what happens now is you get to the final six and I look around and I go, I'd like to beat some of these guys. <laughs> In that pan, there was chicken thighs and lots and lots of spices. It's got to be layered. Different levels of spice and garlic and then you get chilli, and then you maybe get ginger. All those things coming together. And it's got to be served with beautiful, fluffy, well-flavoured rice. Mm. 
I would describe Jimmy's food as colourful, fun, inventive. I think the toughest part and my biggest challenge is how to present the food to John and Greg's liking. You know, I thought my presentation was pretty good, but it seems like that's my big issue. Jimmy, how are you with recipes? I'm not that great at following instructions, to be quite honest. Um, bit of dyslexia there, and so I'm, but I'm getting through it. What's your recipe? My recipe is chicken Kiev with some crispy fries along with some green beans. Well, you're fine with fries. Oh, I'm good with fries. Have you cooked a chicken Kiev before? Never, never. I hope the stuffing doesn't come out, you know, the butter stuffing, but it looks really cool. How do you feel about the competition? Oh, Plus. it's been so much fun. I've had absolutely a blast. Actually, I kind of got emotional yesterday because I was just touched by the whole experience. If you go for it the next stage, how would you feel then? Oh, I'd just be, it'd be like a hit record all over again. Really would. Crust of lovely golden breadcrumbs, sweet, moist chicken meat, inside it, loads and loads of garlic and parsley butter. So when you cut the chicken open, all the buttery parsley garlic sauce comes out across the top of the chicken. My concern right now is the chicken itself being cooked all the way through. Just seven minutes. Bring it together. Start getting it on a plate and a bowl. Wherever you're putting it, do it now. One final minute. Come on, Louise. Come on, Ugly. That's it, guys. Stop, please. Stop. What do you think, Chef? Good. <laughs> yeah, good. It was very challenging. She is opener. Making a pasta. I've never made pasta before. First up is Sid. He's made a lamb kofta on flatbread with hummus tzatziki, and a tomato and onion salad. It looks to me like you've done a decent enough job, but they're just not... I mean, I know you've had presentation issues, but that is not the easiest thing in the world to present, is it? It's not, not a kebab. I mean, how do you present a kebab? It's normally wrapped up and you can't see it. <laughs> Crispy. Oh. Your hummus is lovely and rich with olive oil. Sound is coming from your tzatziki with the fresh cucumber running all the way through it. Your meat is seasoned very, very nicely indeed. You taste all the spices. But for me, the flatbread's just a bit tough. Yeah. I don't mind it being crispy. I don't mind it crispy. But what, what I'm really impressed about is that your cough hasn't dried out. Right. It's nice, it's moist, it's, it's full of flavour. Listen, without setting the competition on fire, it's a competent job. I can't find a mistake with it. Apart from a little, I'd like some more dressing on the leaf. The bread, I wasn't 100% comfortable in cooking. But other than that, uh, it was 90% uh, good comments. Alexis's classic recipe is a Portuguese seafood stew with garlic toast. It smells great. I love the okay. smell of garlic coming off that bread. It's lovely colours. Good. Each individual piece of fish is cooked very, very well. The gurnard's still got a bit of a bite to it. The bream melts in your mouth. And the mussels are delicious. I would like it just a little bit thicker. Let the potatoes cook just a little bit more so they thicken the sauce. That's why the potatoes are there. OK. You've got flavour, you've got good textures, you've got sweetness, you've got garlic. Not bad at all. Thank you. Not bad at all. But I'm really happy with the feedback I got. They didn't criticise how the plate looked. That's been my weakness. They said I could have thickened up the sauce. Um, I think that's a matter of opinion. Audley has made a butternut squash and pecorino cheese ravioli, served with a beurre blanc and topped with crispy sage.
quite a lot of them have been perforated. Yeah. When you sealed them with the fork, those fork ends were puncturing the actual pasta itself and tearing it. The pasta is lovely and thin and cooked really nicely. The filling itself with the butternut squash is seasoned really well. But each one of those ravioli has got water coming inside the actual filling and washing away the lovely strength, the flavour of that butternut squash. The sweetness of the butternut squash filling is, is lovely. The pecorino cheese giving real tang. It's a real, I love it. I love it. I love the strength of the sage. But they are all ripped. Ah. Do you know, we're, we're, we're talking about the press of a fork being yeah. the difference between a successful or an unsuccessful dish here. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thin line. Ooh. Right at the end, you know, that could be the difference between perfect 10 out of 10 and then you're going to kick it all the way down to an average score, you know, bottom of the bottom of the pack. So, I'm in danger. Louise has made a Cori Gassi, a Mangalore chicken curry cooked with tamarind, chilies, and coconut milk, and served with saffron rice and a tomato and coriander salad. Yeah, I sort of feel like I'm about to have a TV dinner and that board's going to sit that in my lap. That is exactly what I would do with it, though, see, so... Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. His nibs doesn't like it, but I like it. The chicken is moist. I do like the texture of your, of, of your sauce. There's a little too much lime in there for me. Oh, is there? All right, apart from that, I think you've done a very good job. Thank you. I really like the sour sharpness of all the tamarind in there and the, the smokiness of the cardamom. I think that's great. Your rice is cooked really nicely. I really like that. Um, I just don't like the presentation. OK. For the first, literally the first time in this competition, I genuinely feel a huge sense of relief that I did as well as I possibly could have done. I need to lie down. <laughs> Jimmy has made a chicken Kiev a crumb chicken breast stuffed with seasoned butter, served with skinny fries and green beans. I think that looks fantastic. Really? I think that looks magnificent, Jimmy. Cool. Simplicity. Yeah. Look, I love that. Can you learn from that? I can learn from that, yeah. That is perfect, Jimmy. That's absolutely perfect. Oh, my perfect. gosh, really? That is crispy on the outside. The chicken is absolutely inch perfect. It's got a lovely oozy sauce inside. Your chips are perfectly crispy, and they're well seasoned. Wow. Coming from you, that's amazing. Thank you. One word for it, Jimmy. Yum. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, properly yum. Good wow. job. Thank really, you. really good job. It went fantastic. I mean, never in a million years would I have ever thought that John and Greg would tell me that it was perfect, and they did. I, I'm just blown away. Jimmy! Oh. Jimmy, Jimmy. The dog oh. horse, Jimmy, rise again. Good job, Jimmy. <laughs> Excellent, good job. Who would have thought good that? Job. Good job. Excellent. Finally, it's Richard. His baked Alaska is made up of sponge, cherry jam, and vanilla ice cream, all encased in a torched meringue. I think the meringue is well made. It's still lovely and fluffy. Your ice cream is a bit custard-like, a bit eggy, and your sponge could probably be a bit lighter. The whole thing is sticky, and sweet as a dessert should be. I just think it could be a little bit more refined. Okay. An instant hit of cozy vanilla is lovely, with the almost wine sweetness of those cherries. The sponge is a little too thick. Yeah. It is a little too sweet, and I think that's because you've piped too much meringue on there. Okay. What a dessert. Three fiddly things, and None of them were perfect, but it was good fun making them. But again, it's not a prize-winning pud from me. We have to make a decision. Because one of you is going to be leaving the competition. We're going to ask you to step outside. 
and we'll call you back in as soon as we've made our decision. Thanks very much indeed. Crazy. We got some good cooks in here, Mr. Wallace. We had some great food uh, and a couple of not so gooders. Jimmy, that chicken Kiev was wow. yeah, perfect. Jimmy cooked the perfect dish. Yep. And no one was more surprised than Jimmy. <laughs> Since Kufta was just a bit untidy, but its flavours were really, really good. It was spicy and it didn't dry out, which isn't easy when you're cooking with mince like that. You can't complain about Louise's chicken curry. And the chicken was still moist, didn't dry out at all. The rice was cooked well. Uh, for me, it was just about presentation. Alexis had a decent round. He had good flavours in that bowl of fish stew. The only complaint with Alexis is I'd like his sauce thicker. Clearly, we believe Jimmy, Sid, Louise and Alexis have done enough to keep themselves safe. And the two who are at risk now are Richard and Audley. Audley had a bit of a rough one, I've got to say, Mr Wallace. Audley's frustrated me today because he did absolutely everything to the letter perfectly until the point where he had to cook the ravioli and some were ripped and others weren't sealed, which meant the water came flooding in. Richard had a technically challenging dessert to do. A baked Alaska is a really difficult thing to get right. He managed to get one out, that's for sure. But, you know, was that a proper baked Alaska? It's always nerve-wracking waiting for the result, but this one's particularly nerve-wracking because I think I'm in the relegation zone. So, uh, yeah, that is nerve-wracking. Hopefully it's good enough, but it's definitely borderline because of the, you know, if they're looking for perfection, that wasn't perfection, so. It's extremely difficult to take a recipe and get it absolutely right the first time you do it. Although I have to say, a few of you came pretty close. For us, this decision has been a real tough one. The person leaving us. is Audley. Cheers, Audley. Thanks, mate, so much. I'm happy with the way I've cooked, and I think there's a, there's a chef in everybody. I've been on a great culinary journey, and uh, it's going to continue. And so, you know, look out for me, because I'm going to be cooking in the kitchen near you real soon. very well done. I thought that was a great test. You did very well, all five of you. I felt like I was being led out to execution by firing squad, but I somehow managed to dodge the bullet this time. And then there were five. I can't believe it. I'm thrilled to be through. Thrilled. I'm really happy. I mean, today was a little bit touch and go, but um, no, I'm, I'm well chuffed. I can't believe it. Today was tough. I know they're all really, really excellent, so yeah, everybody's got to be on the game. You've just got to not mess up. Not only not mess up, but also be slightly brilliant as well. I don't know if I can keep the momentum going, but it's sure been an amazing life experience. The best time is when I go home at night and I get to call my little family, and it's just to see their reaction to, to what I'm going through. It's quite thrilling as a dad, you know. and the five celebrities have arrived at the Royal Hospital in Chelsea.
founded by King Charles II in 1682, the hospital was established to offer refuge and shelter for army veterans. Known as the Chelsea Pensioners, they have become the iconic image for the veteran community in the UK. Welcome to the Royal Hospital Chelsea, home to the famous Chelsea pensioners. As you're probably aware, this year sees the 90th birthday of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, our longest reigning monarch ever. And you today are going to make a celebratory dinner for people that have spent their entire lives serving Her Majesty, the Chelsea pensioners themselves. It's a grand occasion, it's a grand setting, we expect a grand dinner from you. Today you will cook a five course dinner alongside Michelin starred Nigel Howarth. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, do us proud. I'm just really thrilled to be here. I mean, who doesn't love a Chelsea pensioner? To have an opportunity to cook, to celebrate the Queen's 90th birthday for Chelsea pensioners, well, that really is the cherry on the cake. I'm so looking forward to learning from a Michelin star chef. This is, this is what I did the competition for. To have the honor to cook for these remarkable people, and of course, in, in tribute and honor to Her Majesty, that is like a lot of pressure. Hello, hello. Running the kitchen today is one of Britain's leading chefs, Nigel Howarth, chef patron of the Michelin starred Northcote Manor in Lancashire. OK, one Angus there, one souffle away. I've been at Northcote for 30 years now, and we've had a Michelin star for 20 years. The standards are very, very high. I'm an incredibly demanding person. I wanted to do dishes that would be fitting for the Queen's 90th birthday celebration. I don't want the food to feel complicated. I want it to feel natural, but with precision. So they have a real challenge, and that's what it's about. Hi, welcome everybody. Hello. We've got the challenge today of cooking a five-course meal. Each one of you are going to take a course. So are you ready to go? Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's go for it then. Yeah. Right. Thank you, sir. The celebrities have just three and a half hours to master the special menu that Nigel has created for tonight's important occasion. Hi, Jimmy. You're in charge of the starter. Uh -oh. So you've got Lancashire cheese souffle with a beetroot relish and a milk foam. So we're going to make a roux and then a bechamel. The reason I picked a souffle is I think it's just a sumptuous thing to start with. Not too heavy, but that's got character and quality about it. And technically, we've got to make a roux, so classic cooking. And then we've got to lighten that roux by aerating a meringue. And when you're doing this, the, the key thing to make sure is that you don't overwork everything. So what happens if you do overwork it? You end up with a flat souffle. Yikes. The souffles are twice baked. The first time for 12 minutes. After it's been baked for a second time, it's served with pickled yellow beets and a quenelle of beetroot relish. Wow. That That's some Plenty serious soft. spoon work. You want it to be just like that. Wow, that's so pro. That's Thank cool. You. Jimmy, have you any questions? Yes, is there a taxi around? <laughs> <laughs> I've never made anything like this in my life. It's amazing, and he makes everything look so easy. We'll see <laughs> how we do. Yeah. Richard. Jeff. Here we are. We're going to do native lobster with a champagne, orange, and basil sauce. Lovely. So we're going to take the claws off first. 
This lobster dish is a beautiful lobster dish. We are very fortunate in the UK that we've got these beautiful waters that have some fantastic seafood. The blue lobster is the best lobster you can buy. The tail, yeah. just get it in your hands and like so. Once removed from the shell, the lobster claws are coated in tempura batter and deep fried. The next bit is to make the sauce. The sauce is a rich emulsion of orange juice, white wine, butter, basil, lobster and champagne. Do you like it? I put some salt in it. I was hoping you'd say that. So a couple of sprinkles of salt there. This is where great chefs define themselves, on the plate. This is where it matters. OK. Looks delicious. That is the sort of food of the gods. Just follow the recipe, set things out in a logical way, and um, take my beta blocker, and I'll be fine. Sid is in charge of the chicken course. Chicken consomme with plums, brown rice, bacon, crispy chicken skin, and a chicken mousse. So you've got to clarify a chicken stock by making a consomme. Every three or four minutes, just give it a stir like this, and you need to leave that on the stove for about two hours. It's what takes on all that flavor. The other main component of the dish is the chicken mousse. So they've got a bone out of chicken wing, which is quite challenging. <laughs> they've got to make a chicken mousse, which is even more challenging. Pipe that into our chicken wing and then steam that for about 10 minutes. So you can see we've got a clear soup there. And then we've got to finish off with our tarragon, plum and the chicken skin. Best of luck, Sid. Thank you. And fun. Here we go. I'm really excited to make something like this. I'm going to smash it. Yeah. It's Chelsea pensioners are going to love it. Alexis, we've got the main course for you. <laughs> no pressure, <laughs> OK. New season's lamb, wrapped in butterpuff paste with our spinach and mushroom stuffing. And then we're serving it with scorched leeks, and then we're going to make a Madeira sauce. We've got our loin of lamb, spoon on some of the stuffing. Our dish is built in layers. And then we've got our piece of ham here. It's challenging. It's about getting the precision and then timing things and executing it so you get perfection. I know the Queen loves lamb. I've cooked lamb for her before, so I think we're on to a winner with this. We don't want the lamb to be medium rare. OK. We're serving the Chelsea pensioners. We want it pink. I think what I want to do, because, you know me, I'm a panicker, I want to get started. Alexis's first task is to prep the mushrooms for his stuffing. This is by far the most technical dish I've ever cooked in my entire life. I've always been scared of pastry, if I'm honest. Excited. Excited, but I'm keeping it all inside. I'm trying not to panic, basically. Finally, it's Louise, who's responsible for dessert. Summer berry fruit pudding with lemon cream. We're going to do like a Swiss roll. First of all, we've made a paint out of black currants. We're going to paint the bread. We pop our macerated fruit into the bread. And then with the use of the cling film, we roll it into what in effect is a little Swiss roll. Bring our pudding. Tuck it. Can you see how I'm tucking it in there? Yep. Right, and roll it over. Once you've rolled it over. Yes, keep rolling. Keep rolling. OK. And keep rolling. Yep. Right, OK. You see, you've already made that look amazing. And you need to get those done, Louise, as quick as you possibly can, because so they've got to set up. You've got four elements, really. Summer fruit pudding, your lemon cream. And pop it just like that, and it's very, very delicate. You've got your fruit garnish, 
and then you've got your fruit soup, if you will. It's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. To bring all that together is really challenging. Really challenging. Mm. It's totally delicious and rather intimidating. <laughs> Today, some 300 resident pensioners live at the Royal Chelsea Hospital proudly honouring military tradition in their famous red coats. Parade! Parade! Shun! Fires! Front! Richard, march! With service now just two hours away, the kitchen is in full swing. But Jimmy, who will be first to serve, is feeling the pressure. There's so many little processes. I've got to make the roux, I've got to fluff the souffle and the egg whites and all the stuff, you know? You'd think a souffle is not that big a deal. Wow, there's a lot that goes into it, you know? Over on the lobster dish, Richard is also finding the level of detail required a step up. I'm not cleaning mushrooms individually, I'm giving them a spa. It's that complicated. So they'll probably need a massage in a minute too. They're chanterelles, you see, they're absolutely delicious, but they do give shelter to bits of grit and bugs and stuff, so you need to be careful. So they're fiddly. On the chicken course, Sid's carefully removing the skin from the breasts before he crisps them up in the oven. Sid? Yes? Ever, ever cooked your chicken like this before? Never. What's your main hurdle, do you think? Getting my chicken skin crispy, I need to sort of get some of this uh, sinew and the fat off the skin. Are you feeling the pressure on this one? Yeah, there's a lot to do. Yeah? Yeah. But you're an instinctive cook. You're used to freestyling a bit, aren't you? I am. You can't freestyle here. No. No. Impossible. No. Impossible. With an hour and a half until service, Alexis is now making a start on the all-important Madeira and lamb sauce. Right. Keep that pan stable. You don't need to do much. Can you see it's not sticking? It... Okay. Cooking is a you... very patient thing. I'm yeah, always you, kind of yeah. like, you've got to be doing something. But... One of the things that's hard when you're teaching people to go is leave the pan alone. Because, <laughs> you know, the galloping gourmet would be tossing a yeah. pan and we're doing all this. You never do that. Okay. Because you're taking the heat away from the pan. While his sauce reduces, Alexis needs to get on with his spinach and mushroom stuffing. At the moment, I feel as if I've done quite a lot, but I haven't even scratched the surface because there's just so much to do, so much to do. I think they're all finding it challenging. You see, once you start bringing technical sides of cooking into the equation, your time evaporates, you start working and it just disappears. OK, so that's going to go in there. And sprinkle with caster sugar and a squeeze of lemon juice. 75 grams of caster sugar. That looks good. Louise, have you ever made a summer pudding? I have made summer pudding, but like in my far distant memory. And it certainly didn't look like this. What's the most trickiest bit? You've got to get everything right. Like the topping of bread, it is superly important. It's got to look exactly right which I don't think it does at the moment. How much does it matter that you get it absolutely right? It matters 100%. So my, my brother, my father and my grandfather were all in the Irish Guards. So I come from a military family. I absolutely have a huge amount of respect for everybody who's here, and it's an absolute delight to be serving them. It really is. With just over an hour before the first course is due, the guests are arriving. Among them are ex Sandhurst Sergeant Major Ray Huggins. I served 35 years in the Grenadier Guards. 
first time I played it in front of the Queen was 1947. The only problem with being retired, of course, is you never get a day off. 91-year-old Fred Richardson witnessed the Queen's coronation firsthand. On this particular photo, one can see more of the coach and just about see the Queen's head. The five-course meal tonight, that would be a highlight. I hope it will be a day to remember for all the right reasons. Whatever the right reasons are, I don't know. Best to announce everybody. Cheers. 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 Come on, Ray. Never above you, never below you, always by your side. Cheers. 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 Back in the kitchen, Jimmy has his beetroot garnish ready to go. But with service fast approaching, he's behind with his souffles. Souffles done? No, sir. You haven't done the souffle? I haven't done the souffle. I just made the mix now. I was okay. going to go blend this. Jimmy, I think you need to get your souffles done okay. and in the oven. OK. Ten minutes you got. You need to get them in the oven. Yes, sir. Yes, chef. Thank you. I'm in a bit of trouble. I kind of jumped ahead, you know, like an idiot. I didn't even make this stupid souffle base, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm scrambling now. I still have time to do it, but I got to hurry fast, you know, because it's double baked. So I haven't even single baked it yet. Richard, meanwhile, needs to remove all the flesh from his cooked lobsters and he's enlisted some help from Chef. This is what we call divine intervention. I just needed a bit of a refresher. To be fair, John, he's got all his lobster tails out, he's getting his claws out, I'm just helping him with the knuckles, which are really tricky. And, but have you ever eaten anything like this before? Yeah, I have. I love lobster. I have a parishioner, Mrs Bailey, who makes a fantastic lobster thermidor. Uh, Old-fashioned, perhaps, but delicious. There I can't think... be many vicars that have got a parishioner that makes some lobster thermidor, We'll, John. Be, we'll dot his parish next Sunday, I think. Sid's next task is to get his pad ready for his consomme. The pad is a combination of minced vegetables and chicken, which will clarify the chicken stock. He also needs to prep his chicken wings before he stuffs them with his mousse. Time just flies. Time flies normally when you're having fun, but we're under a bit of pressure here. I think I'm a little bit behind, actually. They need to be in within the next five minutes. Over on dessert, Louise is beginning to construct her summer fruit puddings. We have some rolling. Okay, roll, 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 it, roll, roll, it, roll, roll, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, yeah, yep. okay. Yeah, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. Okay, you're right okay. there now. Yep, I'm they're on. looking good, they're looking good. It all rests on whether or not those little summer puddings come out of that cling film okay. And if it isn't, I'm in big trouble. Alexis is now dealing with the most technical element of his dish, assembling the lamb wellington. The pastry needs to be carefully rolled and cut to give it its distinctive lattice appearance before it's moulded around the lamb. But he's forgotten a vital component. Have you wrapped that in the parma ham? Right, OK. Disaster stations. Well, I forgot to put the ham on. <laughs> My world just collapsed. These things are sent to try us. It just means that my rolled pastry... I, I mean, I have to do another one. Trouble is, I haven't even started on the leeks. Alexis, what I don't want you to do now is panic. Just keep calm. Yep. Let's get two pieces of pastry rolled out, then we'll lattice them. Come on, Alexis, you've got to do this now. You've got about 10 to 12 minutes now to get these done. Alexis made a simple mistake. He forgot to put the Parma ham on. He's not in the best place, but I'm just trying to keep him calm because we're not going to have a main course otherwise. 
That's it. We're there. There's just 20 minutes before the first course is due. This is tough. <laughs> oh, this is so much pressure. Oh, buddy. Jimmy's souffles are only scored in the oven for the first time. They're twice cooked souffles. They've got to cook once and then they've got to cook again. I, we are in big, big trouble right now. We've got eight Chelsea pensioners over there dressed in full regalia, about to celebrate the Queen's birthday, and there ain't no food. Lady and gentlemen, would you please be upstanding for the loyal toast? <coughs> the toast is Her Majesty the Queen. The Queen. 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 With the dinner guests seated, the pressure continues to mount for Jimmy. Go. Hot, hot, hot. He must now quickly prep his souffle for the second baking. You need to get your sauce into the bottom of your mould, Jimmy, yeah? And a this little sauce. bit of that sauce in the bottom of your mould, cheese in, and then put your souffles back in the mould now. OK. So five minutes, yeah? Yes, sir. Five minutes. We're on our way, Jimmy. It looks good, yeah? Okay, buddy. They feel delicate, and that's what they should do. The souffles need to be baked a second time in the finishing kitchen, which is on the other side of the courtyard. I think it's going to make those souffles fall apart. <laughs> wow! We're going to start off tonight with Lancashire cheese souffle, Beetroot relish and milk foam. Sounds good. Mm. Now that sounds good. Sounds good. That sounds good. Absolutely. Yeah. Now we get soup in the Great Hall. We don't get Lancashire cheese soup plates, do we? You got five minutes. Okay. Quick, quick. I'm double baking them. Come in on. The, Let's in go. The How long to finish double baking? Uh, I have it in for eight, but I can pull it out early. I think. You're doing well, Jimmy. Is it all right, buddy? You're doing well. You're doing well. You're doing well. John, I think they're done, buddy. Well, there you go then. Let's go. They're boiling. Ooh, look at those, buddy. Oh, Jimmy, good job. Buddy, yeah. get out of there. You've done it, Jim. Buddy, this was scary. Oh, Jimmy, you're looking good. Quick, quick, let's go. Jimmy, you haven't had a hit like this since 1976. You got that right. Service. Hello, ladies. Mate, that is beautiful. They look all right. Thanks, buddy. Well done, Jimmy. That was so stressful. I am elated that it turned out as well as it did. I don't think it was quite as posh as the chef's, but it was close. Jimmy has made a twice-baked Lancashire cheese souffle with pickled yellow beetroot and a beetroot relish. Well, I like the plates and also it looks very appetising. I wonder how they get it all so uniform. You eat with your eyes, don't you? That must be and You look at that and you think, I want to try that. Oh, yes. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. Whoever's made this souffle has done a fantastic job, I think. It's a nice taste of the cheese and the beetroot complements it. It's not overpowered, very soft and subtle. It's the first time I've had a dish like this and it's yeah. lovely. I think Jimmy's done really well. The souffle and the beetroot and the relish is really tasty. I'm so relieved. I'm ready to go hit the pillow at home. <laughs> but I'm really glad it turned out, you know. I really doubted myself, and, and I shouldn't have, because it worked, you know. Richard's lobster dish will be served next. We're getting there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more. Here we go. Slightly hysterical. It's like Ibiza, 1991, the end of the summer. And I'm in amnesia, and it's all gone a bit Pete Tong. 
Come on, come on, come on. Right, thank you. Thanks, Chef. Yeah, best of luck, Richard. I'm feeling very good indeed. I'm very pleased with this so far. And I'm confident that there will be lobster at the Chelsea Royal Hospital tonight. Native lobster salad, champagne and basil sauce. It'll be my first taste of lobster. 90 and you've never had lobster? No. What a sheltered life. Richard's final task is to cook his lobster claws in a light tempura batter. For the tempura, how many at a time? As many as you want. Thank you. Just keep shaking that basket. Once you've done that... Yes, sir. Yeah, you start getting your garnish on. Yes, sir. It's looking good so far, Richard. We've just got to push it for the last push, as I say. Yeah. That is a beautiful kaleidoscope of natural colours, mate. Beautiful. You're there, mate. You are there. Service, please. Mate, well done. Beautiful. Did you like it? I love it. Thank you. I think your parish would agree that may be the best service you've done. Richard is serving a steamed salad of lobster with a crispy tempura lobster claw, orange segments, chives, snow peas, and an orange and champagne sauce. I think the presentation is excellent, very, very appetising, very colourful. The lobster, to my opinion, it was a bit on the watery side and very tough. And the champagne sauce, I don't think there was enough of it to feel the benefit. I'm a little bit disappointed. Super to look at, the bits and pieces, but I'm afraid my lobster was a bit chewy. I, I, I'm surprised because it's normally very easy to eat. Well, I'm sorry to disagree with you, chat. I thought it was absolutely lovely. Lobster is a, a, a slightly chewy meat anyway, but I, I thought it was beautiful. Oh, I found the, the sauce extremely lovely. To me, tasting lobster for the first time, it was a unique taste. I found it quite nice. Sometimes the dishes are so well presented that it seems a shame to disturb them to eat them. <laughs> um, so I, I did enjoy the lobster. Yeah. That's not an easy blend to match, is it? Lobster, orange and champagne. I think he's very skillfully, Richard, pulled that off. All in all, a pretty good job. Well, it was honour upon honour today. So great to cook for Chelsea pensioners. So great to cook for a Michelin-starred chef, Nigel, who was so patient as I dragged his reputation through uh, a bowl of tempura batter. <laughs> Up next is Sid with his chicken course. Looking good! Looking good! Need a four wheel drive here. Chicken broth, dried plums, brown rice, bacon, and tarragon. Ooh, that sounds good. Bacon and tarragon sounds gorgeous. Chicken skin next. Yep. A far departure from the usual presentation they said. Yeah, it don't look too bad, does it? It's great. Sid, can these go? Yes, yeah, service, please. Right. Come on. Off we go, off we go. Are you happy, yeah? I'm very happy, well, yeah. Done. Thank you. You're doing really well there. 
Cheers. Mm. Oh, it's lovely. Sid has made slow-cooked chicken wings stuffed with chicken mousse and served with rice and bacon, crispy chicken skin, plums, fried tarragon and finished with a chicken consomme. I was expecting a bowl of soup. <laughs> but I do think it looks rather appetising. Interesting, I think. I can say that all interesting, different. No, I thought the um, broth was very nice. It was just the skin around the chicken that didn't appeal to me. Initially, I thought the rice was a little bit undercooked, but as the broth mixed with it, it just set it off nicely, I thought. The plums, to me, dominated it. Which are super, tasty, gorgeous. But as I said earlier, interesting, interesting. I have enjoyed it. And if there was a chance of seconds, I, I, I would have a go. Oh, show your plate, Huge amount of work, really hard to execute this dish properly, and Sid got presentation right. It's a beautiful plate from Sid, and I love the chicken with the mousse inside, no doubt about that, and also the quality of the consomme that he's made there, full of strength. I don't think Sid has cooked that rice enough. Today was a great experience. It was great to learn quite a few new skills today and work with a Michelin star chef. He was happy, so yeah, it was uh, really satisfying. Alexis has finally remade his lamb wellington, but it's now a race against time. Well, the leeks are left to do, the lamb's gonna cook uh, across the road. I am actually burning myself quite a lot. <laughs> oh, this isn't going well, is it? I'll tell you what I'm paranoid about. I cannot afford a mistake right now. Because if I if these get burnt, we can't start again. If anything goes wrong now, that's it. Oh, the meat probe needs to go into 48. I wish you a Merry Christmas too, mate, but. Why is it playing, we wish you a Merry Christmas? <laughs> oh, God, Slightly surreal. Now this is the new season's lamb, butter puff pastry, wrapped mushrooms, which I'm not keen on, and spinach, <laughs> which I like, and scorched leeks and Madeira sauce. Sounds very nice. Makes a change from pie mash and liquor. I happen to know that the Queen's favourite main course is lamb, only because I've been on duty at previous events. I think she would love that. How do you think they look? I think they look great, Chef. Stonking, Chef. Well done. I think they look great. I'm really happy with those, Chef. Yeah, brilliant. OK. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Chef. And a Merry Christmas to you, Chef. Yes, sir. Yep. Beautiful. OK. Beautiful. Right. That is a work of art, son. Come on, Alexis. Service. Thank you. Alexis, well done. Thank you me. look shattered. You dug deep, but you've done fantastic. Thank that you, chef. is very, very good, Chef. Thank Should you. Should be proud. Well Thank done. Thank you, Chef. That was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. <laughs> Alexis's main is new season lamb wellington with a mushroom duxelle stuffing served with scorched leeks and a lamb and Madeira reduction. I think presentation is excellent. Leeks are my favourite dish. It smells absolutely delicious. This is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I've been missing, missing things all my life. That is beautiful. 
All my life I've avoided pink meat, but that is delicious. I think this could convert me into mm -hmm. rarer meat. Mm -hmm. mm. The pastry and the accoutrements were absolutely fantastic. I must admit, grudgingly, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that dish couldn't be better looking if it shaved its head and stuck glasses on. That, mate, is a triumph. <laughs> I was close to tears at one point when I had my disaster. But this is, you know, semi-finals of MasterChef. So there's no surprise there, but I've taken confidence from today. I'm looking forward to getting back in the studio and fight for a place in the final, because I, I really want to get to the final now. Back in the main kitchen, Louise is busy finishing off her lemon cream. I'm sort of doing multitasking here because I'm really running out of time. So I'm putting the zest in while I bring it up to heat, which is probably not the best way of doing it, but... Come on, I'm going to get it done. It's now the moment of truth for her summer puddings. And here we are. They have actually, amazingly, I think they've set two, four, six, seven. Our last. Here we go. <laughs> you brought some more paint with you, have you? No. So I do a runner and go get more you paint. You runner and brush. You time me, yeah? Yeah. See you in a sec. Summer fruits pudding and lemon cream. Lemon cream, that sounds good. No. My mum used to make a belting summer fruit pudding with a stale bread that was left over and oh. soak it all up with the fruit juice. Beautiful. It's like the egg and spoon race. <sighs> OK, Louise, paint, paint, go. Let's go, as quick as you can, then. Lovely. Service, please. Great job. Great job. Well done, Louise. Uh, you've even icing sugar in my hand. So, well done. <laughs> Give us a big kiss. Sorry about go. that. Oh, thank yeah. you so much you've for looking really, after me. I've really enjoyed it. You've done it. really, really well. Thank and you. I'm sure they will taste wonderful. And Louise's dessert is a summer fruit pudding with lemon cream. Oh, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure it tastes just as, just as good, yeah. Really nice. I must admit, I've always seen summer pudding as a sort of pudding. Yes. Well, that's super. That lemon cream was, oh, oh gorgeous. Nice yeah. I've only got one problem. Every time I picked that spoon up, my mouth opened. It yeah, was absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Well, I couldn't eat any of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice because the subtle flavours came through, especially the fruit, and I thought the lemon cream was to die for. Really great. Looked very good. It tastes even better, and it was just right for ending the meal, yeah. That's delicious. That's brilliantly clever. Well done, Louise. Well done, Louise. <sighs> Today's challenge was very challenging. <laughs> Chef was pleased at the end. It didn't look 100% like his, but it was pretty close. So I'm really pleased, and he was really nice to me, so I'm delighted. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Chelsea pensioners, may I thank you for a magnificent meal tonight. Thank you very much indeed. Our five celebs have really stepped up to the mark. They've taken Nigel's food, and I think they've done a great job, all five of them.
I mean, there was a few timing issues, there was a few wobbles here and there, but I think our five celebs have done us proud. They did fine, fine dining today. I hope they're inspired by that because that was good work, great work. Now they're going to take all those new skills back to the MasterChef kitchen because they're going to cook their own food and at the end of that, we'll have our final four. The celebrities now have just one more challenge to prove they're worthy of a place in finals week. I would love to get through to the final week. I never thought that I'd even be saying that because I thought I'd be out by now. I'm enjoying every day now, cooking like it's my last, because it might be. I'm in that usual state. My head just whirs. So much going on. I want to get in the studio, get cooking. It would be lovely to go further. I'd love to be in the final. To fall at the last fence would be really galling. I'm feeling confident. It's all in my hands now. So, you know, only I can mess it up. Welcome back to another big challenge. In the last round, you cooked a very special dinner celebrating the birthday of Her Majesty the Queen. Today we want you to prepare a dish that celebrates the life of somebody important to you. Today we want from you something truly special. We want to see your heart and soul. At the end of this, one of you will be leaving us. One hour and 20 minutes. Let's cook. When somebody really cares about a dish, you can taste it. That's the best food. We know it. You're all right, Richard. Very, very studious look on your face. What is it you're making today? I'm making Queen of Puddings. Oh! Yeah, great classic British pudding. Oh, and describe the Queen of Puddings for me. Baked custard with some jam on top of that and then a crown of meringue. And I'm going to do that with some clotted cream ice cream. Why the Queen of Puddings? Well, it's my father's favourite pudding. My father was a great foodie. He was only allowed it on his birthday because it was a bit of a faff to make. He'd start with fried lamb's brains in butter with white pepper only once a year. And for pudding, he'd have Queen of Puddings. So that's why I'm going to try and make this uh, in memory of my father. Did you ever cook with your father? My father was the worst cook in the world. He only well, they had one row in their married life. And my mother stormed out and went to a restaurant. My father had to cook us supper. He burnt peas. Oh, it's going on the side. Don't worry, it's most of it's going in. I think I need to show John and Greg first that I can make a decent pudding, and second that I can do it without looking like a bomb's gone off. What we've got from Richard is an extraordinary pudding made from baked custard, which is thickened with bread, classically. He's then making his own jam with fresh berries, so they've got to come up to the right temperature so they're lovely and sticky and they don't burn. And he's making meringue to go across the top. This is one of those really complicated desserts. Get it right, it can be truly delicious. 20 minutes gone, you've got an hour left. Today, I am doing something risky. I am cooking a paella. Everything's got to be cooked perfectly, and there's quite a lot of things being cooked in it, including chicken, mussels, prawns. Of course, when they put their spoon in it and they taste that rice, it's got to be absolutely cooked to perfection. Louise, how are you feeling? I'm excited about today because I just love paella. It's my favourite dish in the whole wide world. Because when I was little, my grandparents used to live in Spain and every summer we'd go out for two weeks holiday and it really looked forward to going to a restaurant and eating an enormous paella. And I remember it's really, really happy times. And still, every time I see a paella on the menu, I have to order it. It's just, it's like party food. It looks like a party, doesn't it? This paella of yours, is it smart enough? Is it sexy enough to get you through? Sexy, I don't know, but celebration, yes. 
I love a really good paella. The most important thing for Louise is the rice. If there's not enough liquid, then the rice doesn't cook. If there's too much liquid, it goes soggy. The dish I'm cooking today is fish and chips. My mum was never a, a great cook, and she passed away when I was very young. Without fowl, every Friday, we had fish and chips. It was a big part of growing up, and it reminds me of my early days. Comfortable, Sid? Stressed? Wh wh which one are you? No, I'm excited. Very comfortable. All good. What makes a great fish and chips? You know, it has to be good batter. I'm using a local beer from North London, which is, you know, five minutes from where I grew up. I'm nervous of asking you this. What? Presentation of fish and chips? I know. I've, it, it's not going to be easy, but I'm going to make up two plates and then see what looks the best. Are you? Yeah. You're going to give yourself time to really have a think oh, about it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You really are comfortable? Yeah. Are you going to march through to a place in the final four? I hope so. I've come this far, so I'd be very disappointed to leave. I love fish and chips. Everybody loves fish and chips. For me, it's about the crispy bits. The chips have to be crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside. The batter has to be crispy. But inside that batter, there has to be a piece of fish which is cooked so it falls apart at the seam. You guys are halfway. 40 minutes left. 40 minutes. Alexis, what's your dish? Yuvarlakia. I will. What's yuvarlakia? Yuvarlakia is dilled meatballs served in an egg and lemon thick sauce with uh, fresh peas. Uh, it's a very, very Greek spring dish. In whose honour is this dish being made? In my grandmother's honour. I was living in London for a while and I was feeling so homesick for some Greek food and I called her up and she talked me through cooking this dish on the phone from Athens. And when I put it together, sat down and ate it, it just reminded me of home and comfort and just, I loved it. What's bothering the most? I'm guessing this sauce with the, the egg. The sauce splitting is, is a massive problem. You know, I think in the last 10 times I've cooked the dish, I've split the sauce about four. Oh! But once it's split, it, that's it. Speaking of splitting, I'm out of here, Alexis. Good luck, mate. Thank you. My slight worry is it's not fancy. Meatballs in a sauce is not very pretty. That's pretty bad. But when it works, it's a treat. The meatballs I'm fascinated by because minced meat with raw rice, and then the raw rice cooks within the meatball and soaks up all the flavour of the meat. Very clever. I've never eaten anything like it. I'm fascinated. You have 30 minutes left, please, ladies and gentlemen. 30 minutes left. Today I'm going to have fun because I know what I'm doing. I hope it turns out to their liking, but I'm going to do this one for me because this one is in celebration of my life and I've been so blessed. What are you making for us? A chicken pot pie and this came from, actually it's all about my family and Andy Williams was family to us as well, but he was the guy that got us started and his comfort food was Andy Williams Moon River Chicken Pot Pie. And so every Christmas we make this chicken pot pie. But he gave us so many opportunities. I started performing when I was three on his show. We toured the world together. So this has a lot of love and a lot of history. And it's something I like. I never knew that. Yeah. I love Andy yeah. Williams. Oh, yeah, he was the best. What is a pot pie? That's a pot bit pie. of uh, pastry crust on the top, but it has chicken and it's, it's a yummy creamy sauce it's just a, a, a warm and fuzzy feeling when you eat it you know is it smart enough jimmy are you doing enough work i don't know if it's smart enough but if, if this competition is about the heart this is my heart this is where i came from and this is what i love the chicken's got to be really really moist the pastry has to puff up and be crispy on top and the sauce can't be too thick it can't be too thin, otherwise it's going to be this sloppy mess inside a pie bowl. 11 minutes to go. Just 11 minutes.
Guys, you have two minutes. Two minutes. You're done. Stop. Thank you. Oh, it looks really good. It looks good. Yeah. <laughs> Louise, why don't you and your pie come and join us? Inspired by holidays spent with her grandparents in Spain, Louise has cooked paella with chicken, mussels, prawns and squid. I absolutely adore that rust almost going to orange colour. I, I just love it. Your fish and your chicken is cooked really nicely and, and your rice is also cooked very nicely. I love the sweet flavours of the peas and the peppers you've got in there. However, I think you've been a little heavy handed with that pepper. Okay. No doubt about it, it's got a bit of spice in it, that's for sure. It's a bit warm and it makes your mouth tingle a little bit. But what I really like about it is the saltiness coming from the prawns with the smokiness of the saffron and the lovely bits of seafood. All your rice is cooked beautifully. And I love the sweet peas running all the way through it. Yeah, undoubtedly it's a bit of spice in there, mm -hmm. but I like it. I'm really pleased with the way it's gone today. I generally could have left pepper out. It packs a punch in maybe not a Spanish way, but it really does. <laughs> in honour of Andy Williams, Jimmy has cooked a Moon River chicken pot pie with green beans. I like your little pastry top and cheese. And you like the little moon in there? For Moon River. That's right. It's delicious. Thank you. It really is. It's lovely. Little tiny bits of chicken, sweet peas, bits of carrot. The sauce has got a load of black pepper in it, and the pastry across the top's cooked really, really well. Jimmy, it's a tasty, tasty thing. Thank you. There's the dilemma. It doesn't showcase an enormous amount of cookery skill. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. But it's a delicious tasting pie, <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Andy Williams would have been pleased. I hope so. I know it kind of looks pretty simple and plain, but it tasted great and it was spot on for a dish that takes me back to my childhood and my great memories growing up. And so I stick by it and if I get kicked out over that, then I did my best. Alexis is paying tribute to his grandmother with a traditional Greek dish, uvalikia, meat and rice balls in an egg and lemon sauce with flatbread. I think it looks fantastic. Thank you. There's all sparkly bits. Your plate's all shiny. We've got presentation, Alexis. Yeah. What I really love is that sort of sherbet of lemon and creaminess of egg sauce amongst that spike of dill. The meatballs are soft but fragrant and still moist with that rice inside. Yum! Yeah, I, I, listen, I can appreciate the cooking in it, and I appreciate the skill. I'm not mad about the combination of egg, lemon, dill, and meatballs. A little too rich, a little too sharp for me. It was a bit of a mixed bag, I'm afraid. It was exactly what I set out to make. It just so happened that it's not up Greg Street, so I guess I'm in the balance. <laughs> and uh, just a little... You just sprayed malt vinegar? Yeah, just to give it that little fish and chip shop smell. 
<laughs> Sid has cooked fish and chips in memory of his mother, cod in beer batter, with triple cooked chips, pea puree, and a tartar sauce. Sid, I've got to applaud you for having a gut presentation. Well done, looks very appealing. Right. A crispy batter with a soft, flaky fish underneath. Everybody loves a good chip, and you've done a good chip here. You've added to that the sweetness of a pea puree and a zingy tartar sauce. Your textures and flavours are, in my opinion, solid. Thank you. <clears throat> That's a decent plate of fish and chips. Thanks. Crispy chips you've made. Salty, lovely, fluffy on the inside. Crispy batter you've made. Really well seasoned with a lovely soft cod just flaking apart. I, I think you've done a good job. I think you've done a really good job. And I love that. Thanks. Yeah, I've got some really good comments. I feel that I'd sort of done the best that I could in the time I had. Um, so hopefully that's enough to take me to the final. Week. Last up is Richard. He's made his father's favourite, Queen of Puddings, baked custard, fresh mixed berry jam with meringue and a clotted cream ice cream. I think you need to shape this meringue a little better. It looks like it's splodged. And we've got the sauce dripping down. You know, it's worth tidying it and cleaning it a little bit. Yeah. Your clotted cream ice cream is lovely and creamy and really, really rich. And that lovely baked custard sitting underneath, I think that's really, really wonderful. The meringue's not quite cooked enough. It's a bit sloppy. And your fruit itself, I feel that should be sticky jam rather than being a compote. OK. Flavours, absolutely superb. I mean, in, in Dad's honour, yeah, you, you've mastered that. Thank you. um, textures, I'm not quite sure. Meringue a little bit firmer, custard a little bit firmer would not stop me eating the whole thing. OK, thank you. And John and Greg were very nice about certain parts of it and very kind of circumspect about other parts of it. I did try, but I'm never going to be the Fabergé of desserts. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed tasting your food throughout the competition and I've enjoyed tasting your food today. Can I ask you now to take a break? We, we have to make a decision. One of you is leaving the competition. Off you go, thank you very much. Oh, oh well, goodness me. I don't want to just dive on here and... It's out of our hands. <laughs> What I'm really pleased about is the sort of food they cooked. They're cooking food that they really love to eat, and all of them, I think, have done a pretty good job. Who are your standout cooks? Who demands a place in the final four? Louise, I think to take a dish like that with all the complex component parts, that actually is a tricky process. That showed quality cooking from Louise. I really, really liked Sid's fish and chips. And what I'm pleased about is Sid has realised that he's got to have a go at style. He did a good job, fish and chips, and you and I both liked it. Yeah, OK, but Sid's earned a place in the final four. Yeah. So those two, Louise and Sid, go straight through, but the other three, we've both got question marks over. Alexis divided us, absolutely. And the division comes from lemon, dill and meat. I really enjoyed it. And what I really liked about it was that it was quite a complex dish. I think Alexis has shown enough cookery skill, even if his grandmother's Greek dish wasn't to my liking. I think Alexis needs to go through. This, for me, is a decision between Jimmy and Richard. As much as we love the deliciousness of Jimmy's pie, does it show a lot of skill? 
Do you criticise Easy if it ends up tasting delicious? I don't think you can. Well, I'm not sure. I'm actually, I'm still on the fence on this one. Richard did a classic pudding, a queen of puddings. Flavours of berry, custard and ice cream, you can't really go wrong. But the meringue on top was a bit soggy, just wasn't set enough. I like the flavours, wasn't at all happy about the texture of the meringue or the texture of the custard. Big decision, placing finals week. I think both of these guys have got plenty to offer. Who, who's the better cook? I don't know if I'm gonna go forward, but I've done my best and hopefully it's good enough. If I go home, I go home, but I would love to stay. I'm really enjoying MasterChef and another stage would just be great. I've really enjoyed today, and I think you're great cooks. However, we simply can't take five of you through to the next round. One of you has got to leave the competition. The person leaving us. is Richard. Disappointed, actually. I would love to have gone through, but I can't quibble with the judge's decision. I think it was the right decision. I was outcooked today. I do feel that I've achieved something, which is great. And I've learned an awful lot, and I've, and I've had a really good time and met some lovely people. I've got Jimmy Osman's phone number. Beat that. Congratulations, you four. You are our finalists. Oh, I thought for sure I was leaving, for sure. And to be in the final four is awesome. It's so cool. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. The finishing line is almost there. I'm over my delighted, surprised, and daunted. I'm really happy. I'm going to enjoy this moment for now. And then tomorrow, wake up and think I've got to cook again. So uh, full steam ahead. Bring it on. Next time, it's the finals. It's time for business. The remaining four cook for some of the country's leading restaurant critics. This is great. This is really good. I wouldn't be surprised if he was a chef. Yeah. What's happened to you? I've gone all chefy on you, mate. Only the best three cooks can go through to the final. All right, what do you know?